Hey kids, so this little video I'm doing is about, uh, well, the rigging. The job that we had to do was shorting up my halyards so that we could make them safe. Now, when I was in Sandusky, Ohio, I had a really nice fella give me some replacement cable rope spliced uh, halyards, which is what mine were, cable to rope spliced halyards. Uh, only his were much, much newer and much better shape than mine were in. However, they were too long. They were longer. Now, I could have corrected that by installing turning blocks and, and uh, deck hardware and a new drum and moved all of that so I could bring the main halyard back to the cockpit. I could have done that. However, that's a lot of holes to drill through the roof of my sailboat and that many more opportunities for rain to get in and, and water to leak and, 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 and. So, I opted instead to go the least expensive, easiest route, which would be just to shorten those halyards. Now, the rope section of his halyard that he gave me and mine were the same, but the cable section was about 10 or 12 feet longer than mine. And so the logical thing to do was to go ahead and just shorten those up uh, so that they are the correct length. The problem being is that when they're too long, when I would raise up my mainsail, um, the cable would connect to the top of the mainsail, go up through the mast, uh, up through the blocks at the top of the mast, come back down through the mast, uh, and then convert to rope, and then that should come out on and use rope out on the drums. Well, with it long like that, not only was the rope past the drum, the cable was coming out and wrapping around the drums, and you just don't get any kind of good grip or use from that. The cable doesn't work like a rope does around a drum. You can't get the tension, the strength, the grip from them. So I had to change them out. So anyhow, let's cut to the action and go visit with Al the Rigger who uh, helped me cut my halyards and make them shorter. If you would, explain to us what the process is. Um, so we're, we're cutting the cable here. We're yeah. cutting off the old, the old shackle. Okay. Uh, I bent up the thimble pretty good, so I got another one. Uh-oh. There was no easy way to take that off without doing it. Oh, of course not, right? That needs to be replaced. I like to, it looks like they did the same thing before, but they actually get a little bit of a bigger thimble. Uh -huh. That size up, because then it means the wire doesn't have to bend quite as much. Takes a little bit out of the bend, okay. Yeah. And so what I did earlier is I measured this to see how far we had to cut it. And then you kind of double checked that a little bit with me. Make sure I get it right. So we want we need to cut it. So this is what we want, right? Yep, that's what we want. Right over. Yep. Now, I don't have that tool, but I do have a, a cutter I could have used. I have a battery-operated metal cutting blade, you know, a circular blade. Yeah. And it works really good for that kind of stuff. But what I don't have is that crimping tool. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd have done this myself. Yeah, these crimping tools come specific sizes. Yep. So you need one for each. So one inch wire, I brought down a one inch tool. Uh, yep, got to get exactly the right size, and that tool is like uh, 100 bucks. Yeah, I mean, you know, if, if you're good on uh, the internet and on Craigslist, you could probably find a used set, but yeah, they get up there. And I'd be concerned about someone selling something like that used that it was trashed already, you know? Yeah, it's very possible. So, uh, and for as often as I'm ever going to do this, which is once, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just don't justify owning a tool like that, you know? And I have a lot of tools. Right there. You got the right ferrule, huh? So it makes sense doing what I'm doing, cutting it this way. I mean, some people said what I should have done is is uh, undo my splice and then re-splice the rope and the wire, but that seemed like a whole lot bigger job than just cutting these and re-swaging on the ends. A wire to rope splice takes a lot of time. Yeah, it this does. That's, that's not an easy that. job. 
I mean, it's something I could have done by myself, but I'd been there a while doing it, you know? Yeah. I think it's, I think this is, this was a better way. That's what I thought, too. It just seemed like it made a lot more sense. Get someone like yourself who's a pro doing this, I, I'm confident that that sweep will be on there tight. I don't have to worry about it. Busted loose out in the middle of the ocean. So the, the, uh, yeah. No. Someone's sinking? That's what it sounds like. Are you on 16? What do you want? I'm scanning. Better operator of the radio. <laughs> you note when you do these that the ferrule will stretch. It'll grow a little bit. Yeah, yeah so you, you squish leave, it. You yep. can leave a little bit out. Yep. And it'll cover it up. Now, did you put that little green ball back on there? See, that's the kind of stuff. Right there, right there in front of you, under that's your right knee. You got to point out, you know? Yep, there we go, okay. Glad I did that, that's the only way I know which one's which when I'm, when I'm going forward, is just to make sure I got the right one. There's one's green and one's blue. And all over again, sorry about that. Should have mentioned that sooner. It's okay. Because that comes down and it helps carry, cover the ferrule. I put a little tape on that and then that green thing helps keep that so you don't have the little burrs, whatever, sticking out, you know? So do you do much sailing, Al? I used to do a bit more when I was a little less busy. Yeah, you're pretty busy now. I guess you're taking over for the guy that was doing this? Yes. That's and cool. I've been uh, pretty much nonstop since April 22nd. Nice. Or something like that. Well, it beats the alternative, you know? Yeah. Well, I was an engineer. I oh, really? I quit engineering on April 20th <laughs> to do this. What kind of engineer? Mechanical. Nice. Where did you work as a mechanical engineer? Uh, right before this was a, a place up in town. We made, you know, miscellaneous hardware and sandpaper. Before that huh. was uh, an aerospace company with military contracts. Uh huh. Uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, defense, airplane and ship parts. Sure, sure. Always amazed me how Port Washington has this little bit of this little bit of industry in town. You know. That there's still people here, like you said, manufacturing sandpaper, you know? Yeah. There used to be a, a place here in town that did uh, plating. They they had a factory where they did like uh, uh, galvan uh, like chrome plating and galvanized plating and that kind of stuff, nickel plating. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if that place is still there, but I worked there for a little while when I was in high school, uh, bagging turnbuckle boots of all things. Taking three turnbuckle boots and putting them inside of a... Uh, plastic bag and putting the label on it and putting it through the stapler and just doing uh, piece work like that, you know? Yeah. Did that when I was going to Schreiber. Many, many, many years ago. That would have been like in the uh, early 70s. Yeah, there's still a handful of little places like that around. Yeah, and then I met my, uh, my first wife. I met her here in town at a place called Center Laboratories, which I think it's ACK now. That I'm not familiar with. Over by Publishers Clearinghouse, or at least where Publishers used to be. I don't know if they're still there or not, but I don't. I, I don't recall seeing it again. I'm I'm new to town. Oh, are you? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I grew up in Oyster Bay. Oh, okay. It's just you know. Well, I actually grew up in town, but I've been gone for the last 25 years. All so, right. so we're probably both equally unfamiliar. 
Yeah, town has changed a little bit in 25 years. Imagine that. By the way, you should know that as I was motoring over here, the launch from the yacht club here next door came over and was trying to block my way. Really? Yeah, they were like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm going over to that dock. Why? Well, I'm getting some rigging work done. Who? I said, Al. And he kind of gave me a dirty look and he was like, okay. Yeah. I'm like, what the hell was that all about? That's interesting. Usually they were more friendly. Do they own this, uh, this yard? Uh, technically, yes, but they don't like to view it in that sense. The yard tries to, you know, stay independent of the yacht club. Yes, but as far as you know, who owns the property, things like that, it's it's all owned by the same people. Huh. Getting a third crimp on there. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Nice. One done. One and done. Just over that pretty perfectly, huh? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Those little those little balls on there are kind of a neat deal, you know. I like attaching them up there, up in the bow like that. It keeps them from slapping the halyard or the, the mast, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's the right way to do it. Yep. Yeah, you may need to leave yourself out some slack on that one, because... Yeah, I, I prefer working on the dock. That's why I don't put scratches on your deck. Cool. Oh, yes, because it's such a pristine-looking deck, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to... Gotta maintain good habits, right? That's right. There you go. I agree with that. Yep. This whole rope to uh, uh, cable seems like a weird system to me anyway, though. It is. It's, it's kind of outdated now. Yeah. Not a lot of people do it anymore, especially with uh, you know, the new Spectra halyards that's available. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's like a really... Really strong rope. Re yeah, a really strong no stretch or very limited stretch right. line you can get. It's, yep. it's expensive, but a lot lighter than uh, steel and then it's, got, it's got real close to the same braking string ah. pretty unbelievable yep yep I tried twisting that to get that piece off there. The latch. I've seen the uh, the police out there today. They were they were in trouble. They, well, they were just chasing everybody. They were stopping out there, stopping all the boats and boarding them. Anything with a foreign flag. They were stopping and boarding, which I was surprised to see police doing that. I would expect that from Coasties. Yeah. But I wouldn't think the police would have the authority to do that. They're on a boat. They can, they can pretty much do whatever they want. They don't even need a reason to board a boat. Really? Yeah. It's not like a... I thought that was only true of the Coast Guard, not for police. I thought only the Coast Guard could enter your boat with, uh, without probable cause. You might know more than me. 
Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm but you're, you're saying the opposite, huh? Well, I just, I know that, well, it may be, it is the Coast Guard that I heard, but, you know, in, in some cases, you know, it's not like your house or your car, you know, like if someone wants to board your boat, some law official, you kind of got to let them. Huh. Well, that's not cool. Especially this case, because this is my house. Right. Yeah. You know? You might have, you know, you might have a case. You think it makes a difference whether it's a pleasure boat or a liveaboard? Should. That, that you'd have to ask a lawyer. Yeah. Well, I know they were boarding all the all the foreign flag vessels out there. They didn't bother me, but they got uh, four boats in a row right next to me that were all foreign flag. So. And it wasn't Coast Guard, it was a police boat. <clears throat> no. You know, I'm not too familiar. I just, I just try not to break the laws. I agree with that. So did they say where that boat was that was taken on water? I didn't I hear it. Here. Yeah. Oh. It sounded like a neighboring boat was calling it in for him. Yeah. Or as he claimed somebody better on the radio. Yeah. And maybe the other guy was. <laughs> seems know, like a weird. Buckets of water out of seems stomach. like a weird statement, doesn't it? Oh, I'm better on the radio. That doesn't take much to be on a radio, does it? No, but they do give licenses for that kind of stuff, huh? Yeah. Hell yeah. So what was the uh, what was the wind speeds last night? Did you hear? No, I didn't come in yesterday. Oh man, it was howling out here last night. It was blowing a hooli. I stopped. I stopped by in the morning quickly, but the weather had uh, had it going real slow here, and I had some things to do. Yeah. Further east, so I stayed. I stayed over there. Sure. So you're rigging all over the Long Island then? Uh, this sort of this end. Uh, I go from Huntington. I even I was in Queens this morning too. Okay. So from Huntington to Queens on the North Shore. Wow. I'm willing to expand. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, for now, that's that's where I am. Well, it sounds like you're keeping pretty busy. Yeah. This is where I get most of my work. Yeah. I get all the work from the shipyard. Yeah. Which you know really gave me the to go ahead to quit the day job, you know. Talking about quitting the day job, I'm not paying attention to my film in here. Thousand or so. That's interesting. I don't think I've been on YouTube yet. Oh no? No. Oh, I'll make you famous. You have to give me your business card so I can get all your contact info correct. All right, sounds good. I'll give you a plug. All right, number two, all done. There we go. Al the Rigger Man. At your service. At your service. <laughs> uh, do you take plastic? I do not take plastic, unfortunately. Is there an ATM close by? Yeah, there's one in walking distance up the town. Okay. To find walking distance. I'm a fat old bastard, remember. Mile. Yeah, I can do a half mile. That would be awesome. Yeah, I just didn't think it was a good idea to have all those wires wrapped around the drum, you know? Yeah, they don't hold anything. No. And uh, this way, because the other option I had was I was going to put a turning block and then run, run blocks back and put another uh, drum. You know, back there, another winch? Yeah. And then run the lines aft into the cockpit. That would have used up the distance. But then I'd still have the cable coming back through all that rigging going back, so. Yeah, and then you, you, the cable would be slowly sawing through the turning blocks. Right, yeah. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be a good 
Not not a good thing. This is a much better deal. Yeah. Yep, if I thought you had so. The line, you might as well do it that way. That's that's kind of what I was thinking. So. Well, cool, man. And so, what do I owe you? Uh, seventy-five bucks. Seventy-five. Okay. Good enough. Well, there you have it, friends. If you need some rigging work done, call Al Lizza Rigging. Al does diving, rigging, and marine services. He actually has a long list of jobs that he's available to do. Bottom cleaning, zinc replacement, rope splicing, mast climbing, sail installation, winch service, electrical repair, varnish detailing, winterization, shrink wrap, vessel captioning, and engineering services are also available. Contact Al at lizardrigging at gmail.com or give him a call at 516-305-0781. That's Al Lizza Rigging LLC here in wonderful Port Washington, New York. Folks, you have a great day. We'll talk to you later. Thanks.